Howdy folks, Casey LaCourse coming to you from Las Vegas, Nevada with another video showcase of Hearts of the West. This is a special Cowboy Poetry Week tonight and uh, I'm going before we get to the showcase performer, I'm going to recite from John Pelham's book. He is a Will Rogers Medallion award-winning poet and his book is titled Cowboys and Cattle by John Pelham. Here it is folks. And I'm going to recite one of his poems and it is titled Cowboys and Cattle by John Pelham. Millions of them roamed the range before Texas became a state. Cattlemen recognized their value. The need for beef in the East was great. How to get them there from here? That's what they were puzzled by. Trail them, they decided. We'll get them there. They'll buy. Cattle drives were the answer. Millions of cattle went up the trails. The Chisholm, Western, Goodnight, Loving, up, up to Kansas there to find the rails. The Longhorn was uniquely suited for this torturous journey north. Hardy, tough, didn't need much water for nearly 20 years. They proved their worth. They continue to make their mark. Cattlemen still use them today, not just for ornamentation, but beef. Even now, they're still earning their pay. All right, John, that was great, man. Thank you. All right, folks, let's get to the showcase performer for this week. It is Miss Teresa Burleson, and she is an award-winning poet and a real nice person, too. So let's get to her showcase. Take it away, Teresa. It's on you now, girl. We call them Indian. They were the first to make this country their home. Each tribe calls themselves the people. To each other, that's how they're known. Amidst the turmoil of the world, the people speak to my spirit. It's not with my ears that I listen. It's with my heart that I hear it. They walk the land that is this nation before the white man came. First there were few, then there were many, and things were never the same. The people fought to keep their liberty and the life that they knew. Many whites were killed and more came and their numbers grew. Little by little, the people's land, lives, and freedom were taken. The tribes stood strong and resolute, but soon their power was shaken. They were rounded up, tribe by tribe, made to live on a reservation. Many died along the trail and many fought the unjust evacuation. Then they the people's beliefs were banned, so they danced and sang in silence. When they rebelled, good people died, for it always led to violence. Then they took the people's weapons, because they were the enemy. This left them defenseless, and they couldn't feed their family. So the white men said they would bring food, but they did not keep that promise. The people learned that white man government is not always honest. With the buffalo gone, they needed blankets so they wouldn't freeze. Well, the white men brought them blankets that were infected with disease. They took the people's children, culture, and self-respect. And with all the lies and broken treaties, they knew what to expect. But that was then, and this is now, and we live in peace together, not forgetting the trail they walked and the lives that were changed forever. Now this country has grown to be strong, supreme with power and might, built by those willing to work and sometimes willing to fight. Today, our freedoms are being challenged and our beliefs are being banned. They're taking away the Christian foundations that built this great land. Violence has become common and morality has decayed, but you will bravely defend yourself till they take your guns away. Democracy is compromised and we're slowly losing our rights. We must take this nation back. We must learn from the people's plight. Remember friend, history repeats itself and you know this to be true. The people want you to know what happened to them can happen to you. Hi, I'm Teresa Burleson. I'm going to recite for you a poem I wrote called The Utter Women. I signed on with his outfit for better or for worse. But every year it happens, it's like a rancher's curse. 
His mind is somewhere else, and he forgets he has a wife. His thoughts are all about the other women in his life. When he comes in late, I don't ask where he's been, because I know. And I don't want to seem jealous, so I just let it go. But he's bone tired and cranky, and I have to put up with him. But that don't matter if for too long he's out with them again. He'll creep out in the dark of night, and he doesn't even try to hide it. Why, their fragrance was left on his clothes, and he never even denied it. He becomes a man obsessed, thinking of them night and day. I've come to believe he can't help it. He's just made that away. So I pine away for him in silence, longing for his affection, hoping it won't be long before his heart turns my direction. But I wonder if he'd notice me if I had those big brown eyes. And surely he'd look my way if I could swing my tail to swat the flies. Would he pay more attention if I had split hooves for feet? And mercy me with teats like theirs, how can a girl compete? I shouldn't fret. When he's done with them, he'll be all mine. And I'll have my husband back till next year at cabin time. When you can bet that cowboy would move both heaven and earth to be there to assist his first calf heifer's given birth. Hi, y'all. Teresa Burleson here. <clears throat> Casey, of course, asked me to answer two questions for the show. Um... One of them is, when did you realize you could rhyme and recite? Well, I think I was in third grade when we um, studied about poetry. And then you had the Mother Goose, Goose Rhymes. But I made a game out of finding rhyming words. It, in, it intrigued me. It um, entertained me. And it became a game for me. And it was something that I just found that I was... I really like to do and that's just find random rhyming words and then I started writing poetry and of course you know it wasn't very good <clears throat> then when I was a teenager I started writing mushy love stuff that would probably gag you today um, I think I was in my 30s my early 30s which was well a really long time ago when I started writing poetry that actually had some meaning now, when did I find out I could recite? Some days I still don't know. We all have our off days, but there's been times I've been on stage and completely forgot what I was going to say. I think that happens to all poets. The lucky thing is if you're a musician, all you have to do is keep playing your guitar and maybe hum over it. But if you're a poet, you're just out there hanging, trying to remember what you were going to say. Um, the other question was, what is your favorite movie quote? Well, I have several, but the one that came to my mind first, and I don't know why I like this quote, but it cracks me up. It's in Tombstone, when Big Nose Kate sat on Doc Holliday's lap, and he said, why Kate, you're not wearing a bustle. How lewd. Thank you for having me on your show, Casey, and thank you for doing what you do to promote and perpetuate our Western culture.